This course will teach you how to implement speech recognition in Python by building five projects. And it's easier than you may think. This course is taught by these two amazing instructors. Hi everyone, I'm Patrick. And I'm Mistra. Patrick is an experienced software engineer, and Mistra is an experienced data scientist. And they're both developer advocates at Assembly AI. Assembly AI is a deep learning company that creates a speech-to-text API, and you'll learn how to use the API in this course. Assembly AI provided a grant that made this course possible. They also have a YouTube channel where they post weekly Python and machine learning tutorials. So here's the projects you'll learn to build in this course. So on the first project, we are going to learn how to deal with audio data. We are going to see how to capture audio information from a microphone and save it as a WAV file. In the second project, we are going to learn how to do speech recognition on top of this audio file that we have just recorded using Assembly AI's API. On the third project, we are going to change gears a little bit and start doing sentiment analysis on iPhone reviews that you find on YouTube. On the fourth project, we are going to summarize podcasts that we find online and build a web app to show the results to users. And on the last project, we are going to use speech recognition in combination with OpenAI's API to make an app that can answer users' questions. I hope you're excited. Let's get started. All right, so in this first part, I teach you some audio processing basics in Python. So we briefly touch on different audio file formats. Then we talk about different audio signal parameters that you should know. Then I show you how to use the WAV module to load and save a WAV file. Then I show you how you can plot a WAV signal. Then I also show you how to do a microphone recording in Python. And finally, I also show you how to load other file formats like MP3 files. So let's get started. So first of all, before we write some code, let's talk briefly about different audio file formats. So here I've listed three of the most popular ones, MP3, FLAC and WAV. MP3 is probably the most popular one that you may know. And this is a lossy compression format. So this means it compresses the data. And during this process, we can lose information. On the other hand, FLAC is a lossless compression format, so it also compresses the data, but it allows to perfectly reconstruct the original data. And WAVE is a uncompressed format, so this means it stores the data in an uncompressed way. So the audio quality here is the best, but also the file size is the largest. And WAVE is the standard for CD audio quality. So we focus on this in the first part because it's actually very easy to work with this in Python because we have a built-in wave module. So we don't have to install this. And now let's have a look at how we can work with a wave audio file. Um, by the way, wave stands for waveform audio format. And before we start loading some data, let's talk about a few parameters that we have to understand. So before we load our first WAV file, let's understand a few parameters. So we have the number of channels. This is usually one or two. So one is also known as mono and two is stereo. So this is the number of the independent audio channels. For example, two or stereo has two independent channels. And this means it gives you the impression that the audio is coming from two different directions. Then we have the sample width. This is the number of bytes for each sample. So this will get more clear later when we have a look at an example. And then we have the frame rate, which is also known as the sample rate or sample frequency. And this is a very important parameter. So this means the number of samples for each second. And for example, you may have seen this number a lot. So this means 44,100 Hertz or 44.1 kilohertz. This is usually the standard sampling rate for CD quality. So this means we get 44,100 sample values in each second. And then we have the number of frames. So yeah, this is the total number of frames we get. And then we have the values in each frame. And when we load this, this will be in a binary format, but we can convert this to integer values later. 
So now let's have a look at how to load a file. So with the wave for uh, wave module. So here I prepared a simple wave file. So this is five seconds long. So let's actually listen to this. Hi, my name is Patrick and I'm a developer advocate at Assembly AI. And yeah, here we also see a few parameters already. So now let's go back to the code and now let's load this file. So um, for this, we create an object and we simply say wave.open. Then we have to give it the name. So this is called patrick.wave. And to read this, we say we read this in read binary. And now we can extract all these different parameters. For example, let's print the, um, let's say the number of channels. And we get this by saying object dot get n channels. Then we also want to print the sample width. So print the sample width and we get this by saying object dot get samp width. Then let's print the um, frame rate. So print frame rate and we get this by saying object dot get frame rate. Then what do we also want? We also want the number of frames. So we print the number of frames and then we say object dot get n not dot n channels and frames. And lastly, um, let's also print the um, all the parameters so we can get all the parameters at once by saying object dot get par params. And now let's print this. So if we run this, so I say python wave example dot pi, then we see we have only one channel. So this is a mono format. We have a sample width of two. So we have two bytes for each sample. Then we have a frame rate of 16,000 and a number of frames of 80,000. And here we also have all the parameters as a wave params object. So for example, now we can calculate the time of the audio. And we, as I said, the frame rate is the number of samples per second. So if we get the whole uh, number of frames, so the number of frames or number of samples, divided by the frame rate, then we get the time in seconds. So now if we print T audio and run this, then we get 5.0, so five seconds. So this is the same that we see here. So this works. And now let's get the actual frames. So the frames equals object dot get frames get no sorry object dot read frames and then we can give it the number of frames or we can I think we can pass in minus one so this will read all frames and let's for example so let's print the type of this to see what this is and then also print the type of frames zero. And then let's print the length of frames. So now let's run this. And then we see this is a um, bytes object. And um, so here we see class bytes. And when we extract the first byte, then we see this is a integer. And now the length of the frames object is 160,000. So this is not the same as the number of frames. So if we have a look here, the number of frames is 80,000. But if we extract the length here, then this is twice as much. And if you listen carefully in the beginning here, I mentioned the sample width. 
This means we have two bytes per sample. So now if we actually calculate this divided by two, then again, we get our 80,000 um, number of frames. And yeah, this is how easily we can read a wave um, file and then we can work with this and work with the frames. And now to load or to save the data again, we also open, let's call this object new equals, and then we say wave.open, then we can give it a new name, let's say Patrick underscore new dot wave. And now we open this in write binary mode. And now we can basically call all those functions as setters and not as getters. So we say object new dot um, set number of channels. So this is only one channel. Then we say object new dot set sample width. This should be two object new dot set frame rate this is 16000 as a float so these are all the parameters we should set and then we can write the frames by saying object new dot write frames and then the frames so here we have the original frame so now basically we duplicate the file so we write the frames and what I forgot. So when we are done with opening this and reading all the information we want, we all sh also should call object.close and then the same here. So here we say object new dot close and this will close the file objects and yeah. So now if we save this and run this, then now here we see we have the duplicated file and if we run this... Hi, my name is Patrick and I'm a developer advocate at Assembly AI. Then we see this works and it has the same data in it. So yeah, this is how to work with a WAV file and with the WAV module. So now let's see how we can plot a WAV file object. Now plotting a wave signal is actually not too difficult. So for this, we just need to install matplotlib and numpy. Then we import all the modules we need. So again, we need wave, then we need matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then we import numpy, numpy, s, and p. Then again, I want to read the wave file. So I say wave.open and this was patrick.wave in read binary mode. Then I want to read all the parameters that I need. So I want to read the sample frequency and this is object.get frame rate. Then I need the number of samples. So this is object.get n frames. And then I also need the actual signal. So I call this signal.wave equals object.read frames minus one. So all the frames. And then I can say object.close. And then, for example, we can calculate the number on um, uh, the, the length of the signal in seconds. So I call this T audio. And if you remember this from the first code, so this is the number of samples divided by the sample frequency. And now let's print the T audio and save this and run this just as a test. So now we can run Python plot audio and we get 5.0. So this works so far. So now um, I want to create the plot. So um, this is a bytes object. So we can create a numpy array out of this very easily. So I call this um, signal array equals and then we can use numpy from buffer and here we put in the signal signal wave 
and we can also specify a data type so here i want to be to have this int 16 and now we need an object for the x axis or the so the times axis so we say times equals and here we use the numpy lin space function this gets zero as the start and the end is the um, length of the signal so this is t audio or five seconds and then we can also give this a number parameter and the number is the number of samples so if you remember so the signal wave so here we basically get a sample for each point in time and now we want to plot this so we create a figure so we say plt.figure and we give this a fig size of 15 by 5 then we say plt.figure plot and we want to plot the times against the signal array then we simply give it um, a title plt.title and let's call this um, audio signal then I also want to say plt.y label and the y label is the sig null wave and the plt x label is um, the time time in seconds and then we say plt x lim and we limit this to be between zero and t audio so five seconds and then we say plt dot show and this is all we need and now if we run this then this should open our plot and here we have it so here we have our audio signal plotted as a wave plot and this is how easily we can do it with matplotlib and the wave module now let's learn how we can record with our microphone and capture the microphone input in Python. So for this we use PyAudio, a popular Python library, and this provides bindings for Port Audio, the cross-platform audio I.O. library. So with this we can easily play and record audio, and this works on Linux, Windows and Mac. And for each platform there's a slightly different installation command that they recommend. So for example on Windows you should use this command. On Mac you also have to install port audio first so if you use a uh, homebrew then you can easily say brew install port audio and then pip install pi audio and on Linux you can use this command so I already did this so here I'm on a Mac so I used brew install port audio and then pip install pi audio and now I can import this so I say import pi audio and I also want to import wave to save the recording later then I want to set up a few parameters so I say frames per buffer and here I say 3200 so you can play around with this a little bit then I specify the format so the format equals pi audio dot p r int 16 so this is basically the same that we used here so here we use numpy int 16 and then here we have the PR in 16. Then I also specify the number of channels. So here I say one, so simply a mono format. And then also the frame rate. So the rate here, again, I say 16,000. So again, you can use a different rate and play around with this. Then we create our pi audio object. So we say P equals pi audio dot pi audio then we create a stream object so we say stream equals p dot open and now we put in all the parameters so we say format equals format then i need the channels so channels equals channels the rate equals the rate we also want to capture the input so input equals true 
And lastly, we say frames per buffer equals frames per buffer. Then we have our stream object. So now we can um, print start recording. And now we want to record for a number of seconds. So here I say five seconds. And then we store the frames and we store this in a list object. And now we can iterate over and say for i in range. And we start at zero and go until, and now we say rate divided by frames per buffer times the seconds. And then we convert this to a integer, not a float. And with this, we basically record for five seconds. And then we read each chunk. So we say data equals, and then here we say stream dot read, and then we read the frames per buffer. And then we say frames um, dot append the data. So basically frames per buffer. So this means we read this many frames in at once. So with one iteration. And now we have it. So now we can close everything again. So we can say stream dot stop stream. Then we can also say stream dot close and we can say p dot terminate. So now we have everything correctly shut down. And now we can, for example, save the frames object again in a WAV file. So for this, I say object equals wave dot open and let's call this output dot wave and in write binary mode then we set all the parameters so i set object set number of channels this is the channels parameter object dot set sample width this is the uh, this we get from p dot get sample size of our format, then object dot set frame rate. This is the rate. And then we can write all the frames. So we say object dot write frames. And we need to write this in binary. So we can create a binary string like this. So a string and then dot join and here we put in our frames list. So this will combine all the elements in our frames list into a binary string. And then we say object dot close and this is everything we need to do. So now we can run Python record mic and test this. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is a test one, two, three. And now it's done. So here we have our new file. So let's play this and see if this works. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is a test one, two, three. And it worked. Awesome. And now as last step, I also want to show you how to load MP3 files and not only WAV files. So let's do this. So to load MP3 files, we need an additional third party library and I recommend to use PyDub. So this is a very simple to use library. It provides a simple and easy high level interface to load and also to manipulate audio. So in order to install this, we also need to install FFmpeg. So on the Mac, I use Homebrew. So I had to say brew install FFmpeg. And after this, you can simply say pip install and then pied up. And now this should install it. So here it's already satisfied. And now we can, for example, say from pied up, we want to import the audio segment. And then we can say audio equals audio segment. And then here we can say from mp3, if we have an mp3, in my case right now, I only have a from wave. And then here I let's load the um, patrick.wave. And then we can, for example, also very easily manipulate this by saying audio plus six, audio plus six. 
So this will increase the volume by 6 dB, 6 dB. Then we can also, for example, repeat the clip. So we say audio equals audio times two. Then we can use a fade in, for example, audio equals audio dot um, fade underscore in with, with 2000 milliseconds. So two seconds fade in, the same works with fade out. So yeah, this is how we can manipulate. And then we can say audio dot export. And then I want to export this in uh, let's call this mashup.mp3 and then I have to say format equals um, as a string mp3. And now for example I could load um, this by saying audio2 equals audio.from mp3 and then here I use mashup.mp3 and then print done so that we see it arrives at this um, part and now let's say Python and then the load mp3 file and yeah this works so now here we have our mp3 file and we could also load it like this so yeah that's how you can use the PyDub module to load other file formats as well and that's all I wanted to show you in this first part. I hope you learned a little bit about audio processing in Python and enjoyed this. And now let's move on and let's learn how to do speech recognition in Python. Hey and welcome. In this project we are going to learn how to do speech recognition in Python. It's going to be very simple. What we're going to do is to take the audio file that we recorded in the previous project and turn it into a text file. Let me show you how the project works. So here is the audio file that we recorded in the previous project. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is a test. One, two, three. And if we run our script, we get the text transcription of this audio file. So like this here. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is a test, one, two, three. So let's learn how to implement this in Python. So for this project, we are mainly going to need two things, Assembly AI's API to do the speech recognition and the request library from Python to talk to Assembly AI's API. So let's first go ahead and get a API token from Assembly AI. It's very simple. You just need to go to assemblyai.com and create a free account. Once you have an account, you can sign in and just copy your API key just by clicking here. And right away, I'm going to create a configure file and put my API key here. Once I've done that, now I have a way of authenticating who I am with Assembly AI's API. And now we can start setting up how to upload, transcribe, and get the transcription from Assembly AI's API. The next thing that I want to do is to have a main file that is going to have all my code. Uh, what I need to do in there is to import the requests library so that I can talk to the Assembly AI API. So this project is going to have four steps. The first one is to upload the file that we have locally to Assembly AI. Second one is to start the transcription. Third one is keep polling Assembly AI's API to see when the transcription is done. And lastly, we're going to save this transcript. So uploading is actually quite simple. If we go to the documentation of Assembly AI, we will see here uploading local file files for transcription. So I can just copy and paste this and change the code as we need it. So basically, yeah, okay, we are importing the request library already. Um, the file name we're going to get from the terminal. So I will uh, set that later. Um, just a couple of things that we need to pay attention here. Basically, there is a way to read the audio file from our file system. And then we need to set up uh, headers. Uh, these headers are used for authentication. So we can actually already set this because this is not going to be your API token. We set it to be API key assembly AI, right? And we need to import it here, of course. All right, 
that's done. So we also have a upload endpoint for assembly AI and this one is api.assemblyai.com v2 upload. Um, but you know, this might be something that we need also later. So I'm just going to put this to a separate value variable. And then just call this one here. So when we're doing, uh, when you're, when we're uploading a file to assembly AI, we are doing a post request in this post request. You need to, uh, you need to send this post request to the upload endpoint. You need to include your API key included in the headers. And of course you need the data. So the file that you read and we are reading the data through the read file, uh, function in chunks because assembly AI requires it to be in chunks and in chunk sizes of five megabytes. Basically, this is the number of bytes that are in there. While we're at it, we can already get the file name from the terminal too, right? So for that, I just need to import system and inside system, the second or the first, not the zeroth <laughs> variable uh, or the argument is going to be the file name. And here, let's clean up a little bit. All right, now we should be able to just run a command on the terminal, uh, include the name of the file that we want to upload and it will be uploaded to uh, assembly AI. And we will also, let's print the uh, response um, that we get from assembly AI to see what kind of response we get. Again, this is the file that we are working with. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is a test, one, two, three. And what we need to do right now is to run python main.py and the name of the file, in this case, output.wav. All right, so we uploaded our file to assembly AI successfully. Uh, and the response, what we get is the upload URL. So where your data, where your audio file lives right now. And using this, we can start the transcription. So for the transcription, let's again cheat by getting the code from the docs. Here is the data, the code that we need, starting from here. So this is a transcription endpoint. You can see that it ends differently than the upload endpoint. This one ends with upload, this one ends with transcript. I will call this the transcript endpoint. Um, headers, we already have a header. We don't really need this anymore. Uh, the endpoint is transcript endpoint. Uh, JSON is the data that we are sending to uh, or the data that we want assembly AI to transcribe. So uh, we are going to need to give it the audio URL. We already have the audio URL, right? So um, we got the response, but we did not extract it from the response. So let's do that. Audio URL is response.json and it was called upload URL. So we're going to give us audio URL to here because it was just an example. Okay, and this way we will have started a transcription and uh, let's do this and see what the result is. I will run this again, same thing. All right, so we got a much longer response. In this response, what we have, uh, we have a bunch of information about the transcription that we've just started. So you do not get the transcript itself immediately because depending on the length of your audio, it might take a minute or two, right? So um, what we get instead is the ID of this transcription job. So by using this ID, from now on, we can ask Assembly AI, hey, here is the ID of my job, this transcription job that I submitted to you, is it ready or not? And if it's not ready, it will tell you it's not ready yet, it's still processing. If it's ready, it will tell you, hey, it's completed and here is your transcript. So that's why the next thing that we want to build is the polling. We're going to keep, we're going to write the code that will keep polling assembly AI to tell us if the transcription is ready or not. But before we go further, let me first clean up this code a little bit so that, you know, everything is nicely packed and functions. We can use them, pre-use them again if we need to. So this one is the upload function. Yes, and what it needs to return is the audio URL. We do not need to print the response anymore. We've already seen what it looks like. And we need to put the header uh, separately because we want both upload and transcribe and basically everything else to be able to reach this variable called headers. For transcription, again, I will create a 
function called transcribe. And what I need to return from the transcription function is the ID. So I will just say job ID and that would be response.json and ID. Uh, again, we don't need this anymore. I'll just call this transcript response to make it clear. This will be upload response. Let's call this transcript request. So everything is nice and clean. This is this and this goes here. And for upload response, we use it here. And we need to return job ID. All right, so now we have them nicely wrapped up in different functions and everything else looks good. Let's run this again to see that it works. Oh, of course I'm not calling the function. So let me call the functions and then run it. Upload and transcribe. Oh, but of course I also need to pass the file name to the upload function. So let's do that too. Audio URL is not defined. Audio URL, of course, then I also need to pass audio URL, audio URL to transcribe. Good thing we tried. So this will be returned from the upload function and then we will pass it to the transcribe function. And as a result, we will get job ID. And then I can print job ID to see that it worked. Let's see. Yes, I do get a job ID. So, okay, things are working. The next thing that we want to do is to set up the default polling function. So the first thing we need to do for that is to create a polling endpoint, polling endpoint. So as you know, we had the transcript endpoint and the upload endpoint here. Um, that's how we communicate with Assembly AI's API. With polling endpoint, it's going to be specific to the transcription job that you just submitted. So to create that, all you need to do is to combine transcript endpoint with a slash in between and add the job ID. But the job ID is a bit weak, so I'm just going to call this transcript ID. So by doing that, now you have a URL that you can ask to assembly AI with which you can ask assembly AI if your job is done already or not. And again, we're going to send a request to assembly AI. This time it's going to be a get request, but I'll, I'll just copy this so that it's easy. Uh, instead of post, it's going to be a get request. We're going to use the polling endpoint instead of the transcript endpoint. And we just need the headers for this. We do not, because we are not sending any information to assembly AI, we're just asking for information. Um, if you're familiar with requests normally, this might be very simple for you, but all you need to know about this is that when you're sending data to an API, you use the post um, request type. And if you're only getting some information, as the name suggests, you use the get uh, request type. So the re result, the resulting or the response that we get is going to be called polling response. Um, let's see, it's not job ID, I called transcript ID so that it works. Um, then we get the polling response and I can also show you what the polling response looks like. Uh, looks good, okay, let's run this. All right, so the, it, we got response 200. That means things are going well, but actually what I need is a JSON response. So let's see that again. Yes, this is more like it. So again, we get the ID of the response, a language model that is being used and some other bunch of information. But what we need here is the status. So let's see where that is. Oh yeah, there it is. So we have status processing. Um, this means that the transcription is still being is still being prepared. So we need to wait a little bit more and we need to ask assembly AI again soon to see if the transcription is done or not. What we normally do is to wait 30 seconds or maybe 60 seconds, depending on the length of your uh, transcription or the length of your audio file. And then when it's done, it will give us status completed. So let's write the bit where we ask assembly AI uh, repetitively if the transcription is done or not. 
So for that, we can just create a very simple while loop, while true. Um, we do the polling. And if polling response.json status equals to completed, we return the polling response. But if polling response status is error, because it, it is possible that it might error out, then we will return um, error. I'll just wrap this into a function. I can call this get transcription result URL. And while we're at it, we might as well also uh, wrap the polling into a function. Uh, do we need to pass anything to it? Uh, yes, the transcript ID. We need to pass a transcript ID to it. Um, and instead of printing the response, we will just return the response. So instead of doing the request here, all we would need to do is to call this function uh, with the transcript ID. Uh, we can pass the transcript ID here, or might as well, I will just call the transcription or transcribe function in here. And the resulting thing would be the transcript ID from the transcription function. And then I'm going to pass this transcript ID to the polling function that is going to return to me the polling response. Uh, I will call this polling response data. And inside this data, so this is not needed anymore. Um, yeah, this, this, so the polling response.json is what is being passed. I call that the data. So I change this to data here and also data here. Um, yeah, then I'll just pass the data. Uh, if it's error, I can still pass the data just to see the response and what kind of, what kind of error that we got. And here, then we just just say none. All right, let's let's do a little cleanup. So we have a nice upload function, a transcribe function. Uh, what we did before was we were calling the upload function, getting the audio URL, and then passing it to transcribe. But I'm running transcribe here, so I do not need this anymore. I still need to pass the audio URL to transcribe. So then I would need to pass it to here. So instead of this, I just need to call this function with the audio URL. Um, yeah, let's put these here. Actually, to make it a bit more understandable, maybe instead of passing the string error, I can just pass whatever error that was that happened in my um, transcription. Then you know we'll be able to see what went wrong. Uh, all right, so what we get as a result from get transcription result ID is the data and if there is any, the error. So then let's, why not run this and see what the data is going to look like. All right, so we get something really, really big. Let's see, maybe I'll just clear this and run it again, just so that, you know, we can see it more clearly. All right, so we get the ID again, a language model that is being used, etc. Now we want the results. Yes, it is under text. Uh, hi, I'm Patrick. This is a test one, two, three is what we get. And we also get the breakdown of words, uh, when uh, each word started and when each word ended in milliseconds, confidence of this classification and much more information. What we want to do though, even though we have all this information, we want to write this transcript that is generated by assembly AI into a text file. So in this next step, that's what we're going to do. Uh, all right, let's come up with a file name for this file. Uh, we can call it, actually we, we can just call it the same thing as the file name plus txt. So the file name, okay, we were using the argument or variable file name too. So maybe let's find something else. I will just call this text file name and it will be the file name plus 
dot txt. Uh, we can also just you know remove the dot vav or dot mp4 or whatever, but well, let's not deal with that for now. So once I have this, I will just open it. I will open it in a writing format and inside I will write data text because that's where we have the text information or the transcript if you remember here this was a response we got and text includes the transcription and I can just prompt the user saying that transcription is saved transcription saved we're happy. Of course, there is a possibility that our transcription errored out. So you want to cover that too. Uh, if you remember, we return data and error. Uh, what we can do is you can say if data is returned, uh, this happens. But if it errored out, I will just print error. No, it didn't work out. And the error itself so that we see, you know, what went wrong. Okay, let's do a little cleanup again. I want to wrap this all up in a function. We can call this save transcript. Um, data and error will be returned from get transcript URL. Um, it needs the audio URL, so I will just need to pass audio URL here. And with that, we're actually more or less ready. So let's run this and see if we get what we need, the transcript saved in a file. For that, after the after calling the upload uh, function, I can move this one here and calling the upload function here. I call the upload function and then I call the save transcript function and uh, let, let's quickly follow that up. Um, I call the save transcript function, it calls the get transcription result URL, get transcription result URL calls transcribe, transcribe is here, uh, it starts the transcription process and then uh, get transcription result URL also calls polling, so it keeps polling assembly AI and when it's done it returns something and then we deal with it in the save transcript function and we either save a transcript or if there's an error we display the error. So uh, let's run this and see if we get any errors. Transcription saved. All right, let's see. Um, output valve.txt. If I open it up, it looks quite small. Maybe I can, if I open it like this, yes. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is a test one, two, three is the result that we're getting. So that's awesome. We actually achieved what we wanted to do. So in this uh, next couple of minutes, I actually want to clean up the code once again, because you're going to build a couple more projects and we want to have a Python file that has some reusable code so we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Um, so let me first go here. Actually, when we're doing the polling, if we just have the while true uh, loop, it's going to keep asking assembly AI for results. And you know, that, that might be unnecessary. So what we can do is to include some waiting times in between. So it can ask if it's not completed yet, it can wait, let's say 30 seconds to ask again. So we can inform the user waiting 30 seconds. Uh, what I need is a time module. So this call is 30 and I will just import time here. And this way it should be waiting 30 seconds in between asking assembly AI if the transcript is ready or not. And okay, let's create that extra file that we have, uh, API communication, I'll call it. Um, yes, so I will move all of the functions that communicate with the API there. So I need to move the upload function. I need to move transcribe poll, all of these actually. So just remove that, yeah. Uh, let's see, did we miss anything? No, I'll just remove these from here. 
uh, file name can stay here, of course. Headers and the upload and transcript endpoints need to live here because they are needed by the functions. Uh, in here, we have to import the requests library. So we don't need it anymore here. Uh, we need to import the assembly AI API key. Uh, system needs to stay here, time needs to go there. And we also need to import from API communication, uh, import, we'll just say all. And that way we can use this function in our main Python script. I will run this again to make sure that it is still working. So I will delete uh, the text file that was created. I will keep the output. Nice, so we also get the prompt that the program is waiting 30 seconds before asking again. Oh yeah, we passed the file name, but of course it might not exist there. So let's go and fix that. The file name is here. We only pass it to the upload function and the upload function is here now. Um, and in the save transcript, we do not pass it, but we are actually using it. So what we can do is to just also pass the file name here. And that should be fine. It should fix the problem. Transcription saved. All right, let's see. Output to TXC. Hi. Um, like this. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is a test. One, two, three. So this is a very short uh, audio file, and we've actually been using it over and over again. So I want to also show that this code is working to you using another uh, audio file. This is the audio of the, one of the latest short videos that I made for our YouTube channel. Um, it, I was just talking about what natural language processing is. So this time, maybe if I add underscores, it will be easier to call. Yes, I'll just copy its name. And when I'm calling the script, I will use its name. This will probably take a little bit longer because the audio file that we've been using is only a couple of seconds and this one is one minute. So we will see what the results are going to show us. Right, here we go. The transcription is saved. We find it here. Right, this is exactly what I was talking about. Let's uh, listen to it while the transcription is open. Can Alexa be your best buddy? Well, not now, but probably very soon. We have been seeing gigantic leaps over the last couple of years in terms of how computers can understand and use natural language. All right, you get the idea. So our code works, this is amazing. I hope you've been able to follow along. If you want to have the code, don't forget that you can go get it in the GitHub repository we prepared for you using the link in the description. Welcome back to the third project. So in this one, I teach you how to apply sentiment analysis to YouTube videos. So you will learn how to use the YouTube DL package to automatically download YouTube videos or only extract the information you need. And then I also teach you how to apply sentiment analysis. So in this example, I use iPhone 30 review videos and the result that we get looks like this. So for each sentence in the video, we get the text. And then we also get the sentiment. So this could be positive, negative, or neutral. For example, if we read this text here, the new iPhone display is brighter than before, the battery life is longer, and so on. And the sentiment is positive. And here the text is still, there are some flaws, and now the sentiment is negative. So this works pretty well, and this can be applied to so many use cases. So let's get started and see how to do this. So here I've created a new project folder, and we already have our API secrets and the API pi file with the helper functions to work with the assembly AI API. And now let's create two more files. So the main.py file that will combine everything and the YouTube extractor file. So this is another helper file to extract the infos from the YouTube video. And for this, we are going to use the YouTube DL package. This is a very popular command line program to download videos from YouTube and other sites. And we can use this as command line program, but we can also use this in Python. So for this, we say pip install YouTube DL. 
and then we can import this. So we say import YouTube DL and then we set up an instance. So we say YDL equals YouTube DL dot YouTube DL. And now I'm going to show you how you can download a video file and also how you can extract the infos from a video. So let's create a helper function that I call get video infos. And this takes an URL. And now we use the YDL object as a context manager. So we say with YDL, then we say result equals YDL dot extract info. And this gets the URL and by default it has download equals true. So this would also download the file. But in my case, I say download equals false because of course we could download the file and then upload it to assembly AI, but we can actually skip this step and just extract the URL of the hosted um, file. And then we can pass this to the transcribe endpoint in assembly AI. So we can set download equals false here. Then we do one more check. So we say if entries, if the entries key is in the result, then this means we have a playlist URL here. And then we want to return only the first video of this playlist. So we say return result with the key entries and then the result zero or entry zero. And otherwise um, we return the result simply. So this is the whole video info object. And then let's create another helper file that I call get audio URL. And this gets the video infos. And first of all, let's simply print all the video infos to see how this looks like. So now let's say if underscore name equals equals main. And then let's first extract the video info. So video info equals get video infos. This needs an URL. And then we say audio URL equals get audio URL. And then we want to print the audio URL. So right now this is none because we don't return anything. So let's get an example uh, URL. So for this, I went to YouTube and searched for iPhone 13 review and I choose this video. So iPhone 13 review pros and cons. So we can click on this and then we have to watch an ad, but we can actually uh, copy this URL right away and then put it in here as a string. And now if we run this, then, so we run Python YouTube extractor.py, then it should print the um, whole URL. So yeah, actually here I have to pass this YouTube info and let's try this again. And yeah, so here it extracted the whole or it printed the whole info. So this is actually a very long object, a very long dictionary. So I can tell you that this has a key in it that is called formats. So let's actually print only the formats. And if we run this, then this is also still a very large, um, very large dictionary. Um, but then again, this has an inner dictionary and this has a key that is called, um, or actually this is a list. So now we can iterate over this. So here we say for F in video info formats, and then we can print the F let's print F dot, and it has the key X for extension. And it also has a URL. So we also want to print F dot URL. And now if we run this, then let's see what happens. Um, let's actually comment out the URL because this is super long. So let's 
print only the extension. And now we see um, we have a lot of different extensions because it uh, actually stored the video in a lot of different formats and with a lot of different uh, re resolutions and so on. So what we want is this one. So the M4A, this is a audio format ending. So we now check if the format if the extension equals equals m4a then we return the f url key so this is the audio url and if we save this and then print this at the very end then we should get the url to this hosted file so you can see this is at this URL. So this is uh, not related to youtube.com. So now let's, for example, click on this. And then we have this in our browser so we could listen to the audio file. So yeah, this is the first part, how to work with the YouTube DL package to extract the infos. And now let's combine this in the main.py. So in main.py, we combine the YouTube extractor infos with assembly AI and extract the transcript of the video and also the sentiment classification results. So sentiment classification is usually a pretty difficult task, but assembly AI makes it super simple to apply this. So if we go to the website assemblyai.com and have a look at the features, then we see they provide core transcription. So this is basically the speech recognition we've seen in the last part, but they also offer audio intelligence features and they are pretty cool. So there are a lot of features you can use, for example, detect important phrases and words, topic detection, auto chapters, so auto summaries and much more. And if we scroll down, then here we find sentiment analysis. So if we click on this, then we see a short description. So with sentiment analysis, Assembly AI can detect the sentiment of each sentence of speech spoken in your audio files. Sentiment analysis returns a result of positive, negative or neutral for each sentence in the transcript. So this is exactly what we need here. And it's actually super simple to use this. So the only thing we have to change is when we call the transcript endpoint, we also have to send sentiment analysis equals true as JSON data. So this is all we need to do. So let's go to our code and implement this. So let's import all the files we need. So we want JSON, then we say from YouTube extractor, we import get audio URL and get video infos. And from our API helper file, we import save transcript. Then here I create one helper function that I call save video sentiments. And this gets the URL. And here we get the video infos by calling uh, get video infos with the URL. Then we get the audio URL by calling get audio URL and this gets the video infos. And then I simply call the save transcript function and this gets the audio URL and it also gets a title and for the title I want to use the title of the video so we can get this from the video infos so this has a key that is called title and then I want to slightly modify this so I say title equals title dot strip so I want to remove all leading and trailing white space and then I want to replace all spaces with a underscore. And then I also say title equals data slash plus title. So I want to store this in a separate uh, folder. So here we create this and call this data. And now we have to modify this slightly. So if we have a look back, then we see this needs the additional argument sentiment analysis. 
And now, so in the save transcript file, I will put this as additional argument and I will give this a default of false. And then here we say sentiment analysis equals true. And now we have to pass this um, through. So we have to pass this to the get transcription result URL. So this also needs this parameter. Then the transcribe needs the parameter. And here this needs the parameter. And now as a JSON data that we send, we put sentiment analysis equals true or false. And this is all that we need. And now, of course, I also want to save this. So here we check if the parameter is true. Then I create a separate file. So again, I say file name equals title plus and then let's call this underscore sentiments.json. And now I say with, with open the file name in write mode as F and then I import JSON in the top, import JSON and then here we simply say JSON dot dump. And first we have to extract the infos, of course. So we call this sentiments equals data. And then the key, if we have a look at the documentation, then here we see the JSON response now has this additional key, sentiment analysis results. So we use this and then we dump the sentiments into the file. And I also want to say indent equals four to make this a little bit more readable. And now in the main.py, we call the function and say if underscore name equals equals underscore main. And then I want to call the save video sentiments and the URL is this one. So let's copy and paste this in here. And now let's run the main.py file and hope that everything works. So the website is downloaded and transcription starts. So this looks good. So let's wait. All right, so this was successful and the transcript was saved. And now we have a look at the data folder. Then here we get the transcript of the video and we also see our JSON file with all the sentiments. So for each sentiment, we get the, the text of the sentence. So for example, this one, with the exception of a smaller notch, the iPhone 13 doesn't seem very new at first glance. But when you start using this flagship, you start to appreciate a bunch of welcome upgrades. Then we get the start and end time. Then we get the sentiment, which is positive. And we also get the confidence, which is pretty high. Then the next example, the new iPhone display is brighter than before. The battery life is longer and Apple has improved, blah, blah, blah. So here also the sentiment is positive. Then we have still, there are some flaws here and now the sentiment is negative. So this works pretty well. And yeah, this is how you can apply sentiment analysis with assembly AI. Now I want to show you a little bit more code how we could analyze this, for example. So now we can comment this out. So we don't need to download this again. Then we can read our JSON file and here we store the positives, negatives and neutrals. So we iterate over the data and then we extract the text. So the text and we also extract the sentiment. So then we check if this is positive, negative or neutral and append it to the corresponding list. Then we can calculate the length of each list and then we can print the number of positives, negatives and neutrals. And we can also, for example, calculate the positive ratio. So here we ignore the neutrals and simply do the number of positives divided by the number of positives plus the number of negatives. And now if we save this and run this again, 
Then here we get the number of positives, so 38, only four negatives, overall positive ratio is 90%. So with this, we, you can get a pretty quick overview of a review, for example. And yeah, I, I think the sentiment classification feature can be applied to so many different use cases. It's so cool. So yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this project. And now what would be really cool is if we could display these information in a nice looking web app. And this is actually one thing that you will learn in the next tutorial together with Misra. So let's move on to the next project. All right, now it's time to build a podcast summarization app. And we're also going to build a web interface for this application. In this project, we are again going to use Assembly AI's API that offers the chapterization summarization features. And we are going to get the podcast from the Listen Notes API. So let's get into it. Here is what our app is going to look like once we are done with it. So we will get a episode ID from Listen Notes API. I will show you how to do that. And when we click this button, it will give us first the title of the um, podcast and an image. Uh, the name of the episode and then we will be able to see the different chapters and when they start in this uh, episode and if we click these expanders we will be able to read a summary of the chapter of this episode this is all quite exciting to start building a web front end for our application too so let's start building it so in this project like in the previous ones we are going to have a main script and we are going to have a supporting script uh, api communication where we have all of our are supporting functions that we want to use over and over again. Uh, we built this before, so this is the exact same one from the third project, the project that we did before. Um, and we will only need to update this and change some things to start doing podcast summarization. So the first thing that I want to update here is that we will not actually need the upload endpoint anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one because um, the transcripts are going to be, or sorry, the podcasts are going to be received from the Listen Notes API. So it's going to be somewhere on the internet. We will not download them to our own computer. So we can immediately uh, tell assembly AI, hey, here is the audio file. Here is the um, address of the audio file that I want you to transcribe and it will be able to do that. So there will be no uh, download or upload needed. Uh, that's why I also don't need the upload function. Also the chunk size not relevant anymore. All right, so that's good for now. And the next thing that we want to do is to set up the Listen Notes API communication. So we are going to use Assembly AI to create the summaries of the podcasts, and we will get these podcasts from Listen Notes. If you've never heard of it before, Listen Notes is basically a database of podcasts. I think nearly all of the podcasts. So you can search for any podcast. For example, one of my favorites is 99% Invisible and you will be able to get all of its um, information plus the episodes. So you can search for episodes here if you would like to. Uh, what we're going to do with Listen Notes is that we are going to send it a episode ID, like specific episode ID that we will find on um, the platform itself. So let's say I want to get the latest episode of 99% Invisible. If I go to the episode page and go down to use API to fetch this episode, I will see a ID. So this is the ID of the specific ID of this episode. And using this ID, I will be able to get this episode and send it to Assembly AI. And this is exactly the ID that we need on our application. So um, to get that, first, of course, we need the Listen Notes endpoint. Listen Note has a bunch of different endpoints, but the one that we need is the episode endpoint to get the episode information. So I will just name this Listen Notes episode endpoint and it is this one and of course we also need the header again to authenticate ourselves and in the header we're going to need to put a api key so all you have to do is go to listen notes create an account and get an api key for yourself and we are going to go and paste it here And here, as you know, we are importing the API key for assembly AI. Now I'm also going to import the API key for listen notes. And we are going to send it with our requests to listen notes. So I will call this the listen notes headers and this the assembly AI headers. And for listen notes, this is named X listen API key. 
All right. The first thing that I want to do is to build a new function that is able to get the episode ID and give us the URL to the podcast's audio file. So I will call this one get episode audio URL. And it is going to get an episode ID. And we're going to send a get request to listen notes. Let's build the URL first. Uh, the URL is going to consist of the listen notes episode endpoint and a dash plus the episode ID. And we are going to send a get request to this URL. I will call the response we get response for now. Um, and the last thing that we need, of course, is the headers for authentication. And that one is called listen notes headers. So as we do this, we should be able to get a URL for the episode ID. And the information is going to be sent us in a JSON format. So this way we'll be able to see it. So maybe uh, let's try this at first and see that it works. So to do that, I am just going to, again, import from API communications, import everything. Uh, I'll just make this a simple Python script for now. And I'm going to call get episode audio URL. Um, and I will use the episode ID that I found here. This one to keep things simple. And as a result, we will uh, print the um, response that we get from listen notes. So let's run this and see what happens. All right, this is uh, really long. So maybe I will I will use a pretty print to make it more readable. <laughs> so this pretty print here. And instead of this, just use pretty print. Okay, let's do it again. All right, that is slightly better. Let's see what kind of information we are working with. Um, nice, we get the audio URL here. This is the URL of the audio. Let's see where that takes us. Yeah, this is just the audio of this podcast. You can hear it. Ferocity that the Roman advance was halted. Nice. All right. Uh, so this is exactly what we need. But if you want, you can also get some extra information about the podcast. If you want to display it in some way, we will definitely just display it. Uh, this is a description of the episode, whether there is explicit content or not. Um, the image of this episode... Uh, and some extra information about the podcast, like Facebook handle, Google handle, etc. So you get a lot of information. So if you want to make your web application and your interface even more interesting, more interactive, you can, of course, include more of this in your application. So if we just return data audio from here, we will actually just return the audio URL. But you know, now that we have all this information, might as well extract some more of it. So some of the things that we can get is a thumbnail of this episode, um, name of the podcast, and title of this episode, for example, like we said, we will uh, display here. So let's do that. This will be the audio URL. Uh, we will also get the episode thumbnail. Thumbnail. We can get the podcast title. That would be in podcast and then the podcast specific information and then we get the title. And lastly, episode title. Thing, it is just title and we can just pass all of this information back episode thumbnail episode title and podcast title 
So we don't really need to change much from the rest of the functions, for example, transcribe, poll, get transcription result that we already built beforehand. Uh, the only thing that we need to change is now we're not going to do sentiment analysis. We, need, we want to do use auto chapters features of assembly AI. So I am just going to rename these to auto chapters. This is just the name of a variable, so it is not that important. You can keep it the same, uh, but for readability, it's probably better to change it to auto chapters. But here, um, in this variable, we need to change uh, this name to auto chapters because we are sending this request to assembly AI and it needs to know that we want auto chapters. Uh, what else? We also just updated the name of the header. So it's not only headers now, it's assembly AI headers. Same here. Um, in the polling, we do not need to change anything. We are only asking if the transcription is done or not. Again, in get transcription result URL, we want to change it to auto chapters. One other thing that I want to change is it's a uh, very small, but normally we were waiting for 30 seconds, but now I want to wait for 60 seconds because podcast episodes tend to be a little bit longer. So we want to wait a little bit longer in between asking assembly AI if the transcription is ready or not. So this is another change, but the main work is going to happen in the save transcript function. So the main change we're going to need to do in save transcript function is that before we were uploading our audio to assembly AI, AI, and then we were getting the result back. But instead, this time we are going to uh, only have a episode ID, and then we are going to get the URL from listen notes, and then we are going to pass that to assembly AI to start the transcription. Uh, so what I want to do here is to, instead of URL and title, I will just give save transcript the episode ID, and then I will run the get episode audio URL from, oops from inside the save transcript. Um, and as a result, what we're getting is audio URL, episode thumbnail, episode title, and podcast title. Again, we are not doing sentiment analysis, we are doing auto chapters, and we need to pass the audio URL to get transcription result URL. Um, get transcription result URL gets um, the auto URL as URL and auto chapters, but it is not defined. So, you know, this is what we want to do. So I'll just call it true here. Um, the next thing that we want to do is to deal with the response that we get from assembly AI. So let's first see what the response from assembly AI looks like when we are doing auto chapters and then let's deal with it. Uh, but let's fix some of the problems here. So I will not save it into a file for now. I can comment these out. Uh, this will be auto chapters. Uh, the main thing that I want to do is see what the result looks like, right? So I will pretty print the data. And the data is already in JSON format. Um, transcribe, yes, it is. Yeah, so I will just uh, show that. So I, I'm just going to comment these out for now just so that you know we have an idea of what the response looks like. Um, to run this, I will just pass the episode ID to save transcript. Oh, we're still printing um, this one, so I will actually stop printing the response from listen notes. And let's start it again. All right, so we got the results. Uh, let's see what it looks like. Uh, it's a lot of information. Let's scroll to the top. What we wanted was the chapters, basically. So let's see what the chapter information includes. So as you can see, this is one chapter, and this is another chapter. 
So for each chapter, we have the starting point and then we have the ending point, the gist of the chapter. So really quickly, what is this chapter about? We have a headline for this chapter and a summary. So in a couple of sentences, what is happening in this chapter? What, what is the presenter talking about? What we want to do is to show this information on our application, right? On our web interface. So that's why what we want right now is to extract this information from um, the response we get from assembly AI and then save it somewhere and then we can uh, visualize it on our streamlit application. So I will undo the commenting here. Also here. So I will call this file uh, with the episode ID. It will be episode ID.txt. And as we always do, I, I'm just going to save the transcript. You know, we don't have to touch this so much, but I will start another file and let's call this chapters file name. And this one will be episode ID um, plus, maybe let's call it like chapters.txt. All right, so the chapters will be another file so i'm going to keep all the chapter information somewhere else and in here i'm going to write some of the information i got from assembly ai specifically the chapter information and i'm also going to include some of the information i got from the listen notes api uh one mistake here i do not want it to be a text file i want it to be a json file so that it will be easier to parse easier to read later for me uh, the first thing that i want is the chapters and I'm going to get that from the data variable. Uh, it's called chapters. So let's check. This section is called chapters. Yeah. So let's start it. I will say episode data. Um, at first, let's include the chapters. Again, I will call it chapters. Uh, and then inside this episode data, what do I want? I want the episode thumbnail. I want the episode title and I want the podcast title so that I have all of this information in one place saved on my file system. I can just read it whenever I want and display it to the user. And finally dump that to the file episode data and I'll let the user know that the transcript is saved. Um, this part we don't need anymore. And again, if there's an error, we will just say that there is an error. And we will return true. Now that we've got this far ready, up till now what we do is get the URL from based on the episode ID from Listen Notes and then send it to this URL to Assembly AI, get audio chapters information and then save it to a file. So um, let's see that this works well. And while it's running, we will start the Streamlit application. So I will just run this again. Um, but in the main, we of course need to call save transcript. Oh, okay, we're already doing it. So I will just run the application and let's also start building our Streamlit application now. So if you've never heard of Streamlit before, it is a really easy way to start building web interfaces for your application, specifically for Python. It's very simple to use. It is has a very simple API. It's a very simple library. So what you have to do is you call, you import Streamlit as SDE if you wanted to use it simply. And let's say if you want to, um, you know, put a title in your application, all you need to do is SD title and then you can show that it is a title. So I will run this separately to show you how it works. And to run streamlit applications, you just need to say streamlit run main.py. Um, streamlit is installed on your computer like any other Python library, so you just need to use pip. Uh, say pip install a streamlet and you will be good to go. Unless you make a mistake and call streamlet with a capital S, 
uh, which is not the case. It needs to be a lowercase s. So let's do that again. All right, so this is actually an application. It, the only thing we're showing right now is a title. And we know what we want it to look like is this. So I will start building the um, elements of, in this application. So the first thing that you know strikes us is that we have a sidebar. We have a title that says podcast summaries. And then we start showing the information from the um, information we got from the APIs that we've been using. So let's put a sidebar. Maybe let's let's fix the title first. We want to say podcast summaries. Title says podcast summaries. I can even say welcome to our or to my application that creates podcast summaries. Let's see. Maybe that will be too long, but we'll see. And let's create the sidebar. It's quite simple. You call streamlit sidebar dot text input. Yeah. And then you know you can say please input a an episode ID. And I can also have a button at the end of the sidebar that says uh, get um, podcast summary, maybe with an exclamation point too. So let's run it again. Okay, this is looking more like it. It says, welcome to my application that creates podcast summaries. Um, I can put an episode ID here and then I can say get podcast summary. So you see that it is running. It is running because I forgot to um, comment out this one. So it's actually running the whole application. I'll just stop it for now because we don't have any way of displaying whatever we get back from uh, the APIs. So I'll stop this now. And now that we have the application looking more or less like what we want it to look like, let's wait for um, the chapter results to be printed on our file and then we will see what it looks like and then we can start parsing it and then showing it to the user on our Streamlit application. Okay, so the transcription is saved, our auto chapter creation is done. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Um, we have the chapter section, we have the episode thumbnail, episode title and podcast title. Um, all good. In the chapters, we have chapter numbers, and inside each chapter, we have the summary, headline, just start and end. So it looks good. Let's start showing this. Uh, the first thing that I want to show, of course, like we did in the beginning, like we showed in the beginning, is the name of the episode, or maybe name of the podcast, plus the name of the episode, and then the episode thumbnail. So how I'm going to show that is again using Streamlit. And that is going to be the header for me. And I will include the podcast title. Maybe with a dash in between and the episode title. But as you can see, we do not have it yet. So first we need to open the file that includes these things. And the file that includes those things is the episode ID dot uh, underscore chapters at JSON. So let's start that again. Uh, file name would be episode ID uh, underscore chapters dot JSON. And where do I get the episode ID? I get the episode ID from the text input. So the user is going to import an episode ID and then I'm going to save it here in this variable and that way I will have the file name. So then I just need to open this file. And let's just call it data, for example. I need to import JSON, of course. and load it into the variable data. So in this variable data, what do we have? We have the chapters. So first let's get the chapters, data chapters. And then what we want to get is the podcast title and then the episode title. Let's change the names, episode title. And we also want the thumbnail. Um, and what did we call the thumbnail? 
we can see here uh, episode thumbnail. All right, episode thumbnail. So we're already showing the um, podcast title and episode title, stream and header, and then we can show the image uh, thumbnail about the streamlit image um, function. And from this point on, the next thing that we want to show is the chapters, of course. Uh, one thing we can do is, for example, we can use a for loop. We can say for chap in chapters. Um, you know, you can just say streamlit write Uh, or just show the chap, uh, but that's one way of doing it. But then uh, you're going to have a lot of text uh, one after another, and it's not really nice. What we want is like in the original one I showed you at the beginning, we want expanders. So it's quite easy to create expanders with Streamlit. Again, you just say Streamlit expander, and then you want you write what kind of information you want uh, to be in your expander. So as the title of the expander, I will write here what I want in the title. And uh, whatever I want inside the expander, I'm going to write inside. So I do not need to use a streamlet thing again because this is going to be inside the expander. Uh, and inside the expander, what I want is the summary. So I think it was called summary. Let's just check again here in our JSON file. In chapters, we have summary. It's called summary, yes. So I want the summary to be in there. And as a title of the expander, I want there to be the gist of each chapter. So for each chapter, it's going to show me um, the expanders. For each chapter, there will be expanders and the title of the expander will be the gist of this chapter. And inside the expander, we are going to have the summary of this uh, chapter. So let's run this and see how it looks, but let's, let's first make sure that everything works. So I have the title and then I ask for a episode ID from the user. Um, there is a button that starts this process and uh, for that to happen, I'll just call this button. So we, we this information, this button uh, variable has the information of whether this button has been pressed or not. And I only want this part, this part to happen, this visualization, the display part to happen if the button has been pressed. So I'm going to wrap this all in a condition. So otherwise it's not going to happen. Yes, but right now, if someone presses the button, nothing really happens. So we also need to add an action to this button. And how we're going to do that is we're going to say on click, if this button is clicked, what we want to happen is the save transcript file to be run. So I'm going to call it here in the on click argument. And we also have arguments, right? And here is how you pass arguments to your function that you call from your button. Uh, this is a tuple, that's why you write the variable or the argument that you're passing to the function in the first one, and the second one is empty. Uh, now, when the button is clicked, this one should run and we should be able to see all the information on our application. So let's run it again and see what happens. Yeah, we need to run the streamlet application this time. Streamlet run main.py. I'll close the old ones so we know the difference and which one is which. <laughs> this is just the example from the beginning. All right. So we want to get a podcast and we want to display it. Uh, I will get this one again. Let's get the podcast summary. And here it is. Uh, we have the title, welcome to my application that creates podcast summaries. Okay, maybe that's a bit too long. I will shorten it. Uh, the name of the podcast, name of the episode, number of the episode, also the missing middle. And here are my chapters. So apparently there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chapters. Assembly AI's API was able to um, find. And in each chapter, we have the gist of the chapter as a title of the expander and the chapter summary here. The la one last thing that I want to add is the start and end point of the, or just the start point of the chapter here because I wanna show like how long each chapter is maybe. So let's do that. So for that, I want to see in this JSON file how it looks. So the start looks like this. So these numbers might look a bit random to you, but basically they are milliseconds. So I want to turn it into um, minutes and seconds, and if applicable, hours, minutes, and seconds. And 
there is already a function that can do that. Here it is. We don't need to, you know, work on it for a long time. Basically, uh, you get the milliseconds, and when you get the milliseconds, you can get the seconds uh, out of it, how many seconds there are, how many minutes there are, and how many hours there are. So basically, you're counting the hours, and everything uh, that is on top of the hour is uh, mentioned as a minute if it does not add up to an hour, and everything that does not add up to a minute is... Uh, pointed out as seconds. And here is what we will return. So we'll say the start time is either hours, minutes, and seconds. And if there is no hours, we don't have to say zero, something, something. So we just show minutes and then seconds. And how I'm going to show it is within the expander title. And I can, you know, show it with a dash in between. Uh, I'll say get clean time. And in there, what I want is a chapter start let's see what it was uh it's just just start okay all right let's run it one more time and then see what our application looks like awesome okay this is our application on the sidebar we can uh, input a episode id that we get from listen notes we can say get podcast summary it will show a nice title, title of the podcast, title of the episode, show us the thumbnail of this episode. And for each chapter, we show the gist of the chapter, kind of like a headline, when this chapter started. And when you click the expander, when you expand it, you get the summary of this chapter. So this is what we set out to do and we achieved it. I hope you were able to follow along. Again, don't forget to go grab the code from the GitHub repository. Welcome to the final project. In this one, you will learn a bunch of new exciting technologies. First of all, you will learn how to do real-time speech recognition in Python. Then you will learn how to use the OpenAI API and build a virtual assistant or chatbot. And finally, you will learn a little bit about WebSockets and how to use async IO in Python. So I think this is going to be really fun. And first of all, let me show you the final project. So now when I run the code, I can start talking to my bot and ask questions. What's your name? How old are you? What's the best ice cream? And you see, this works. So I think this is super exciting. So now let's get started. All right, so here I have a new project folder and again we have our API secrets file and now a new main.py file. And the first thing we're going to do is set up real-time speech recognition. And for this we have a detailed blog post on the assembly AI block. This will walk you through this step by step. So first of all we need Pi Audio to do the microphone recording. So this is the very same thing that we learned in part one. Then we use WebSockets and then we use the Assembly AI real-time speech recognition feature that works over WebSockets and then we create a function to send the data from our microphone recording and also a function to receive the data and then we can do whatever we want with this. So, but in order to just copy and paste this, let's actually code this together. So let's get started. Um, one note here, in order to use the real-time feature, you need to upgrade your account though. So yeah, but anyway, let's get started. So let's import all the things we need. So we want um, Pi Audio again, then we need um, WebSockets. So we say import WebSockets. And this is a third party library that I showed you in the beginning that makes it easy to work with WebSockets. And this is built on top of async IO. So now we're going to, to build async code. Then we also import async IO. We also import base64. So we need to encode the data to a base64 string before we send this. And then we import JSON to receive the JSON result. And then we say from API secrets, we import our API key from assembly AI. And now the first thing we set up is um, set up our microphone recording. So for this, we use the exact same code that we learned in part one. So I simply copy and paste this part from here. So let's copy and paste. Um, so we set up our parameters, then our Pi Audio instance, and then we create our stream. And now we need to define the URL for the WebSocket. 
and we can find this on the blog post homepage. So here I can copy and paste the URL. So the URL is at websockets and then assemblyai.com and then real time. And then the last part is also important. So here we say question mark sample rate equals 16,000. So this is the same rate that we use here. So make sure to align this with what you have. And now we create one function to send and receive the data. And this is a async function. So we say async def and we call the send receive. So this is responsible for both sending and receiving the data. And now we connect to the WebSocket and we do this with a async context manager. So again, we say async and then with and then WebSockets dot connect. And now we specify the parameters URL. Then we say a, we set a ping timeout and we can set this to 20, for example. Then we want a ping interval and this should be five. And then we also need to send our authorization token. So the key or the parameter for this is extra headers. And this is a dictionary with the key authorization and the value is our token. And then we say async with s and then we can call this what we want so i say underscore ws for websocket then first we wait to let this connect so here we say await async io async io dot sleep 0.1 so be careful here we cannot use time dot sleep so we are inside a async function so we have to use the async sleep function and then we um, wait or we, we try to connect and wait for the result. So we say um, session underscore begins equals and then again await underscore ws. And then this is called resv for receive, I guess. And then we can print the data and see how this looks. Let's also print um, sending messages. And now um, we need two inner functions. So again, a async function. So we say async def send. And for now we simply say pass. And then we say async def receive. And here also we pass. And actually these are both uh, these both will have a infinite while true loop. So they will run infinitely and listen for incoming data. So here we say while true. And for now, let's just print um, sending. And here we also say while true. And here we simply pass. So I don't want to spoil our output. And now after this, we need to combine them in a async IO way. So in order to do this, we say, um, we call the gather function. So it's called async IO dot gather. And now here we gather send and receive. And this will return two things. So the send result and the receive result. So actually we don't need this, but just in case we have this here. And now um, after defining this function, of course, we also have to run the code and we have to run this in an infinite loop. And in order to do this, we call async io and then dot run and then our send receive function. So um, now this should connect and then should print sending all the time. So let's run this and hope that this works. 
So yeah, it's already connected and sending work. So you see, that's why I didn't put the receive in here as well. So we get a lot of outputs and yeah, I can't even scroll to the top anymore. But basically, yeah, it should have printed this once and then now this is working so far. So we can continue implementing these two functions now. So now let's implement the send function first and we wrap this in a try except block and now we read the microphone input. So we say stream.read and then we specify the frames per buffer. And I also want to say exception on overflow equals false. So sometimes when the WebSocket connection is too slow, there might be an overflow and then we have an exception, but I don't want this. Um, it should still work. And then we need to convert this or encode it in base64. So we say base64 b64 encode our data and then we decode it again in utf8. This is what assembly AI expects. Then we need to convert it to a JSON object. So we say JSON dump S and then this is a dictionary with the key audio data. So again, this is what assembly AI needs. And then here we put in the data and then we send this and we also have to await this. So await WS send the JSON data and then we have to catch a few errors. So let's copy this from our blog post. So these ones, let's copy and paste this in here. So um, we accept a WebSockets exceptions connection closed error. Then we print the error. Then we make sure it's of this code. And then we also break. And then we catch every other error. So it's not best practice to do it like this, but it's fine for this simple tutorial. And then we assert here. And then after each while true iteration, we also sleep again. And yeah, so now we can copy this whole code and paste it into this. So the code is very similar here. Um, so we have the same try except but now here, of course, we have to wait for the transcription result from assembly AI. So we say result string equals, and then again, we uh, wait, and then the WS RESV. Then we can convert this to a dictionary by saying result equals JSON dot load from a string and here the result string. And now this has a few, so this is a JSON object or now in Python it's a dictionary. So now we can check a few um, keys so we can get the prompt or actually now this is the transcription of what we set. So we say prompt equals results and then it has the key text. And it also has a key that is called message type. So now we check if we have a prompt and if the results and then the key message underscore type. And now um, this should be final transcript. And now what assembly AI is doing, it will, while we are talking, it will already start sending the transcript. And once we finished our sentence, it will do another pass and make a few small corrections if necessary. And then we get the final transcript. So we want only the final transcripts. And now for now, let's print um, me and then let's print the prompt and now we want to use our chatbot so now let's print um, bot and then let's for now let's simply print um, let's print a random text for now and then we set up this in the next step but first I want to test this so let's say this is my answer and this is all that we need for the receive function so let's Clear this and run this and test this. 
Oh, we get an error. A weight wasn't used with future async IO gather. Oh, this is a classic mistake. Of course, here I have to say await async IO gather. So let's run this again. And now it's working. So yeah. What's your name? And you see the transcript is working. So now I uh, stop this, but if I scroll up, what's your name? And each time we get this is my answer. So this is working. And now of course here we want to do a clever thing with our prompt and use our virtual assistant. So for this, we now set up OpenAI. So they have a API that provides access to GPT-3 and this can perform a wide variety of natural language tasks. So in order to use this, you have to sign up, but you can do this for free and you get a free, you get free credits. So this will be more than enough to play around with this. And it's actually super simple to set this up. So let's create a new file. And I call this, um, let's call this openaihelper.py. And then we also have to install this. So we have to say pip install openai. Um, and then we also, after signing up, you get a API token. So we have to copy this in API secrets and then we can use this. And now we can import OpenAI and we also need to import our secrets. So from API secrets, we import our API key OpenAI. Then we have to set this. So we say openAI.API key equals um, API key. And now we want to do question answering. So the, the OpenAI API is actually super simple to use. So we can click on examples and then we see a bunch of different examples. So OpenAI can do a lot of things, for example, Q&A, grammar correction, text to command, classification, a lot of different stuff. So let's click on Q&A and if we scroll down, then here we find the code example. So we already set our API key and now we need to grab this and um, let's copy this and let's create a helper function. So define and let's call this ask computer and this gets the prompt as input. And now I paste this in here. So we say response equals openai.completion.create. Then here we specify an engine. And now we specify the prompt. And in our case, the prompt is going to be um, the prompt that we put in. So prompt equals prompt from the parameter. And now there are a lot of other different parameters that you could uh, check out in the documentation. So in my case, I only want to keep the max token. So this will specify how long the result can be. And yeah, let's say 100 is fine for this. And now this is all that we need. And now of course we need to um, return the response. And this is actually a JSON object again, or now a dictionary. And we only want to extract the first possible response. So it can also send more if you specify this here. So in our case, we only get one. And then we say response, and this is in the key um, choices, and then the index zero, so the first choice, and then the key text. So this will be the actual response from GPT-3. And now in the main, the only thing we have to do is say from open AI helper, we import ask computer. And then down here in the receive functions. And now here we say um, response equals ask computer. And then we put in the 
prompt and then here this will be our response and now this should be everything that we need so now let's again clear this and run the main.py and let's hope this works what's your name what's your name how old are you where are you from All right, so let's stop this again. And yeah, you see this works. And this is how you can build a virtual assistant that works with real-time speech recognition together with OpenAI. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this project. If you've watched this far, thank you so much for following along. And also I hope to see you in the future on the Assembly AI channel because on there we also create a lot of content around Python speech recognition and also machine learning. So please check it out and then I hope to see you soon. Bye.